Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Enjoying the cold weather? Yes. <laughs> Every, anybody who likes this freezing weather we've been having in the morning, put your hand up. <laughs> you are banished from this church. California. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to everybody. We're so pleased to have you here in person, online. Um, I, I don't know if you've noticed a trend in our reading that since the celebration of the Epiphany on January 6th, our Sunday readings have been all about answering the call of God or heeding the call of God or paying attention to God's call to each one of us. We had Jesus heeding that call at his baptism. We had Jeremiah heeding that call to be a prophet. Isaiah being called to be a prophet. Uh, today, in our scripture readings, we're going to read of the call of the first three disciples in the Gospel of Luke. It really should bring to mind for each of us, I believe, what is God calling us to do or what is God calling us to be? We're going to begin our service with our opening hymn, 362.
us in the God's kingdom, kingdom, kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. shook the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin has blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gezeret, and a crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have not caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated. There was a certain priest whose completely, absolutely favorite pastime was fly fishing. It was an obsession. So far this particular year, the weather had been so bad that he hadn't had a chance to get his beloved waders on and his favorite flies out of their box. Strangely, though, every Sunday the weather had been good, but of course Sunday is a work day for the priest. The weather forecast was good again for the coming Sunday, so he called a fellow priest and claimed that he wasn't feeling well and had lost his voice and had to stay in bed. He asked him if he would take over for him on Sunday. The fly fishing priest drove 50 miles to a river near the coast so that no one would recognize him. An angel up in heaven, oh, you can't get away with anything with those angels. An angel up in heaven was keeping watch, and he saw what the priest was doing. So he went to God and told God uh, all about it. And God agreed that he would do something. With the first cast of his line, a huge fish gulped down the fly. For over an hour, the priest ran up and down the riverbanks fighting the fish. At the end, when he finally landed the monster fish, it turned out to be a world record salmon. <laughs> Confused, the angel asked God, why did you let him catch that huge fish? I thought you were going to teach him a lesson. He said, I did. Who do you think he's going to tell? <laughs> They were tired, Simon and 
James and John, exhausted, really. Fishing was their livelihood, and it was a hard one. Sometimes the waters were generous and the catch productive. Sometimes, perhaps too many times, nets came up empty. They didn't have electronic fish finders in those days. They had to rely upon intuition and experience. Fishing was an enterprise that included the family members as well as hired hands. Luke tells us that when the catch of fish was so big, they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. Peter and Andrew's fishing boat would have been 23 feet long, 7 feet wide. It would have had a crew of five, four to row, and one to steer and supervise the catch. And the supervisor also had to keep a close eye on the weather because storms could come up quickly over this, this particular body of water. The fishermen used nets made of flax or linen, and most of the fishing was done at night so that the fish would not see the nets and swim around them. During the day, however, the men were also busy. They caught the fish. The caught fish had to be sorted for sale. The nets had to be washed in the lake to remove any silt, and tears in the nets had to be mended. And then the nets were hung out to dry and folded for the next catch. Fishing was a tough life. But it was the way you made your living. It was probably the way your father made his living and his father before him. It was in your blood, and you couldn't just walk away. But fishing, even then as it is today, was not just about fish. It was about income. Income for your family. Income for the clothes that your children would wear. Income for the food that you would put on your table. Income for the necessities of life. And maybe, if you're lucky, just maybe a little extra. But some days left you wondering. What will I do about the food for my family tonight? The shores of Lake Gennesaret, today's gospel reading, were teeming with people on this particular day that Luke talks about. Teeming with people who were longing, hungering, yearning for something. Some were longing for a better catch of fish as they cleaned their nets after a long night of disappointing work. Some were longing for a glimpse of hope as they heard the words of the preacher, Jesus, on the lake shore, who had to put out a waves in order to teach the crowds. There was something different about his preaching. His words struck a chord deep within their hearts. For once, they were hearing words about God's love and care for them instead of God's rejection of them. These words of Jesus seemed to be filled with life, not with woe and destruction. There was something different about Jesus that actually helped to make a difference in their day-to-day -day living. Then the preacher turned to these very tired, weary fishermen, Simon, James, and John. And he asked what seemed the unthinkable. Let's go out to the deep waters and drop the nets in the daytime. They protested a little. Maybe they even felt a bit annoyed. After all, they were the fishermen. They were the experts. This was their livelihood. If they came in after a night's fishing with empty nets, then there were no fish out there to be found, especially in the light of day. They had spent the night fishing and caught nothing. But still, there was something that compelled them to obey Jesus. Maybe it was the authority of his words. 
Maybe it was his sense of compassion. Maybe it was simply the look in his eyes. Maybe they too had caught a bit of the preaching, a few of the words as they cleaned their nets that fateful morning. So they did as he requested. The nets not only caught some fish, but there was an abundance of fish. Fish enough to nearly sink the boat. The unexpected became the expected. The unthinkable became the thinkable. The impossible became the possible. That's how it is with Christ. Those three men realized something on the lakeshore that day, and hopefully their experience serves as a lesson for us. That when you encounter Christ, you do not walk away the same person. When you encounter Christ, life will never be the same again. When you encounter Christ, you end up on paths that you never expected. When you encounter Christ, your job description changes. When you encounter Christ, you encounter God. And when you respond to Christ, miracles happen. My prayer today is that we open ourselves up, our hearts, our very lives, to both encounter and respond to Christ here in this place, now in our lives today. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able, and as together we say the Nice and Creed. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, and the Creator of heaven and earth, of all things and on the sea. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who was conceived by the Holy one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he is crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and is buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is virtue to glorify. He has birth to the prophets. Church. We acknowledge the baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look up the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, <laughs> sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who are in and For the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all who claim to bless us and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, 
Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all the ministers. For the special needs and con concerns of this congregation, we pray for Rebecca, Ian, Barbara, George, Jen, Carol, Ronnie, John, Janie, Elizabeth, Wynn, Dale, the people of St. Andrews and Casablanca, and any other names you wish to add. Hear us, Lord. We, are we, are the the Lord. Lord. we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, knowing and unknown, that you have done and have done them, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the Lord's peace with one another. Peace. Peace. I thought that was me. She's <laughs> with you. <laughs> well, we a few weeks we decided they had to do surgery, so it's five more weeks. Well, I hope you know. Is it with you? Is it with you? <laughs> Just want to bring to your attention that the uh, Eucharistic prayer for today is Eucharistic prayer C. Um, and it has a lot of responses to it, so I just want to bring that to your attention uh, so you'll be ready when we get into it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. We will sing, The Strong Word Did Cleave the Darkness in the Hymnal 381.
people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we wait the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the world. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gave his life for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us in everlasting life.
May the grace of God uphold you. Amen. May the grace of God surround you. Amen. May the love of God flow through you and from you this and every day. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Bible hymn is on the following page, 22. Thank you. 